All right, August. We're about to see what you can do in terms of the hurricane season. And things do look like we're on the up and up. We're going to talk all about that today. Welcome back to the Weather Center, everybody. As you can see, we're officially back. We're back here at home base. And it looks like planning wise, everything is working out perfectly. I wanted to be back here in Central Florida to really start to track the tropics. And today is July 31st, 2025. And it looks like we are going to get started doing just that that so if you're brand new to the channel it would mean so much to us and the rest of the weather center community if you kindly hit that subscribe button let's give that like button a little nudge i need those nudges today and especially going forward the next seven days of august i'll show you here why momentarily let's share this content with those you believe would benefit from it and let me know in the comments where it is you're tuning in from and if any of the information that i'm showing you has you a little on the concerned side we're going to keep it reined in i'm going to keep it fairly quick as well it's about 2 and 2 30 in the afternoon right now i gotta head on over to news six here momentarily i'm doing some of their digital shows this evening gonna be talking tropics there too so if you can tune in here in central florida or wherever it is you're watching from it would mean a lot to us at the studio as well but now let's go ahead and rock in. Let's get started. Here is our full disk goes east satellite. Right now, the tropics are fairly quiet. We're watching a couple different things. First and foremost, we still have a fairly active eastern Pacific basin. The MJO is coming across. And as always, in traditional fashion, the east pack is going to receive the action first. We've had some pretty solid stuff out there. Rapidly intensifying major hurricanes, a couple of extra tropical storms out there, as well as the earthquake that occurred a couple days back a couple days back off the coast of russia and it sent waves all the way to the north american west coastline thankfully there hasn't been a whole lot of damage reported at least in terms of the united states i truthfully haven't paid too much attention to it because i've been extremely busy since coming back you know you go on a long trip and then it seems like life and reality hits you like a pile of bricks or two it's literally been me over the last 24, 36 hours, you take a look at the screenshot I'm going to superimpose on the screen here. I took this last night for shoots and giggles. I left the house at 4.45 yesterday morning to get started with the Navy once again. And this is when I was heading back home from the studio. And that's why, unfortunately, I couldn't bring you a video, but we're here now. we got a lot to discuss, so that's neither here nor there. The Atlantic Basin is still fairly quiet. Here goes our first tropical wave trying to hold on to a little bit of thunderstorms on its northern side. You can see right there a little puff of showers and storms on the northern apex of that wave axis, if you will. It's kind of moving through right there off towards the west-northwest. It is going to be approaching the Lesser Antilles just as originally forecast. It should be fairly convective or it should be fairly convectively benign i should say not going to see a whole lot of ramping up as it continues towards the lesser antilles maybe whereabouts in through here we might see a puff or two of it trying to get going some of our ensembles have not completely dropped it but again like i've told you in previous episodes i don't think that's going to be the one to make the cut on top of that, notice we have an upper trough and a frontal system working its way through the Appalachians, the upper Midwest, the Great Lakes, and the Northeast United States. Models are very interesting in terms of what the end solution could look like off the mid-Atlantic coast. We're going to be watching that area as well. CPC does have the entirety of the southeast into the eastern Gulf highlighted for a 20 to 40 percent shot at tropical development over the next two or so weeks. I thought that was very interesting as well because as we move into August, that's precisely where we we'd been highlighting our hot spots in terms of potential impacts or cyclogenesis since January, February, and March. And now we're starting to see other official sources plastering it on their charts as we get closer to the peak of the hurricane season. It's this thing on the furthest right-hand portion of your screen. Let's get over to the next page and start to pick up the pace here. I don't want to spend too much time on the satellite, but take a look at how much our easterly jet is really cranking across central and northern Africa. That is a healthy sign of the monsoon, both in the Indian Ocean and the West African monsoon really getting going. And as a result, we have multiple wave appendages that are, are going to be splashing down off the west coast of Africa near the CV Islands out there here very soon. And I do think when we switch over to your 850 vorticity, it's this one. 
This clustering of vorticity is the one that we have to watch. That's the one that I'd been mentioning last couple of updates that even looking long range, we're going to have our upper levels become a lot more favorable. Our lower levels, I'll show you here in a second, are also going to become more favorable in comparison to where they've been much of July, late June, and so on and so forth, especially as we continue to open the gates, as I've mentioned. And that's the one I really want us watching. And then back behind that, we have another MCS feature there you saw in the water vapor that I will be paying close attention to. This is partially why, where these waves are going to be transitioning, they're generally going to come off and move in this sort of fashion. Now, remember, if you're watching right now, not talking name storms, not talking hurricanes, please don't come after me. This is where the waves Regardless of development, I'm not talking development chances just yet. I'm saying this is where we're going to see things moving, things. And if you notice, over the last seven days, thanks to this heat wave, the brutal summer heat wave that's been expanding across the eastern and central United States, we've also seen our waters warm up through portions of the upper MDR, the lower subtropics, and especially the southeast United States, the mid-Atlantic coast. So I thought that was very interesting. I wanted to bring that up to you. This is part of what is going to be improving. If I go back to the very beginning of our latest run of the Euro, let me see if I can refresh very fast. Bear with me. There you go. All right, here is the 12Z. Notice how extensive the high-pressure ridging extends through the MDR. That's another reason we haven't seen a ton of activity just yet with any of these tropical waves moving through. We've had the Saharan dust, albeit we are now at record low amounts. The Saharan dust, the Saharan air layer, since early June when we had those first couple of plumes has really not done a lot. And I think some of it also has to do with how enormous this North American or North Atlantic oscillation has really stretched itself out. If you look, we have anomalous high pressure ridging all the way up towards almost the poles, the upper mid latitudes, and then well down towards the equator here. As the MJO, I'm not sure if you caught that Weather Center Willows in here. She's excited. We're finally doing a video again. As you fast forward and we get the MJO in place, look at how we start to see conditions improving off the southwest Atlantic, off the southeast United States into the Gulf. That's for our first wave. Still don't give it a very high vote of confidence. I'm still going to watch it. Not taking my eyes off of it, but the ones that I want you to focus on are coming up here shortly. And then as we really start to see the rising motions fixate over the equator, over Africa, notice how the basin really just cuts loose. We see a lot of that anomalously high pressure, the subsidence as it's called, the sinking, go away, and we welcome in lower pressures between the 8th and the 13th of August as we scroll through time. Notice how we are far more favorable in terms of just general rising motions and lowering pressures across the tropics. Now, the GFS is showing that as well. I think that's why this model has been a little more bearish. If you notice, because it struggles with the propagation of the MJO, it keeps it hung up over the Pacific. It really doesn't show as favorable of a signal in your low-level environment as the Euro does. But that's been something that the GFS has struggled with. The Euro tends to move it a little too fast. The GFS tends to get it hung up. And so that's what we're still kind of sifting through. But if you notice, as you get closer to that favorable time frame I just mentioned, there you go. We see our high pressure really backing off. Although you don't see as low pressure anomalies, as much of the anomalies spreading out across the lower basin there. You just kind of see things open up a little bit and become a bit more active in terms of breathing room for these tropical waves, not nearly as much of a signal as on the Euro. The reason that is, I'll go ahead and fast forward you through time. This is the first couple days of August. If you notice, we are still seeing a little bit of that sinking, the downward vertical velocities because of convergence aloft. We very quickly shift gears as the MJO comes through and turns into a bit of a temporary African standing wave out there. That's when we start to see the vertical velocities go up and the basin becomes a lot more favorable. Pay no attention to this. I know we have the brown shades over the Gulf, the Western Atlantic, but what that's really showing is we're gonna start to favor sinking in the Eastern Pacific. Sorry for my doodling willows bumping my hand. There goes her tail right there. Let me get her out of the way. Sorry, mamas. Yeah, I know. Gotta make this video though. As you can see, we start to favor sinking 
and lesser conditions over the eastern Pacific, and we start to bring things up in the Atlantic, and that hangs out there. If you look on the right-hand side of the chart there, we keep those green anomalies over Africa all the way through to about the 15th, and even beyond that, the basin just seems a little bit more favorable. Some of our upper-level streamlines there even indicating a picking up of our African easterly jet and a little bit more of that easterly flow off of Africa as things ramp up a little bit. So conditions are improving. They're going to continue to improve. And the reason I'm watching so closely is because that impactful signal is there. I don't want to alarm anyone, please. I want you to know what I'm saying here. I'm not calling for landfalls, I'm not saying, get ready, it's coming. Here we go with the giant arrows. But this is what we've been watching. If you've been a longtime follower of the channel, we've been mentioning this could be another impactful season. And the ensembles are kind of showing that. We refresh the page one more time, and I'll take you through. Here comes that second wave. Moving through the Lesser Antilles. This is about middle of the day on August 9th. So we still have a lot of time to get ahead of this and watch how things evolve. It's just the unfortunate nature of the beast. As we've gotten closer in time, little by little, things have kind of evolved into the more favorable setup as opposed to things looking more unfavorable as we've rocked through the mid portions of July. As you go through time, there goes your second wave, really starting to show signs of life. Couple members perking up over the Turks and Caicos, the Bahamas is a hot spot of ours and then believe it or not comes right across the southeast united states and into the gulf and then the mid-atlantic and it doesn't quite stop cooking from there and that's all i'm going to show you there i'm not going to spend too much time i just want to show you what the general trend is you take a look at the gefs the ensembles for the gfs this model is finally starting to perk up a little bit notice it follows the same track tendency same date and time, I'll rewind back to about the 8th or the 9th of August. Notice how our ensemble members are picking up either east of your leeward, windward islands, or right over top of them. And then as you fast forward from there to that fateful Charlie anniversary, we may have a developing tropical system approaching the southeast United States, somewhere in between the Greater Antilles, the Bahamas, or an even better option, get strong too quick kind of rides the wave on back out towards Bermuda. Unfortunate for them, but better for us in the United States. Latest GEFS control member, when you lump all those ensembles together, this is 12Z, that was 6Z I was showing you. The spaghetti plots for 12Z hadn't come in yet. If you notice, for that second wave, it does end up undergoing cyclogenesis and makes it up towards the coastline of Florida and into the Gulf right there. This is a long ways away, everybody. I want to continue to emphasize that this is going to change, but this is a trend we've been following now for about five to seven days. Even when I haven't made videos, this is something I'm continuing to watch. The AI model, I'm showing it last because obviously a lot of you out there probably think folks are using it for clickbait or, you know, just to kind of cultivate the, the energy of something's coming. Now, the AI model has had its wins. It had a huge flop just now potentially with our first wave. It was showing aggressive model run after aggressive model run, and then it dropped it all together. I want to show you for the latest wave, just because we have a bit more unanimous support across models. And again, it just follows the same track tendency. There you have it. This is about the 8th to the 10th of August. Something trying to flare up as it gets out of the greater MDR towards the lesser or greater Antilles. And then the rest is history. You start to see it hit that favorable area of the southwest Atlantic, and we could see something try to develop in the form of a tropical storm or a Category 1, possible Category 2 hurricane. And I use those intensification identifiers loosely because we're looking towards the back end of the model run. I'm going to keep saying that even if it's at nauseum, if it's annoying. This is very late in the run. I'm just showing you where our agreement is for now and what I'm going to continue to monitor. This is not something to start stressing over this far out. But the trends in terms of the pattern and the background state of the atmosphere are there. Here you go. You can see in our latest 15-day ensemble, this is your ensemble mean. You can see the standing wave gets set up by about 2nd or 3rd of August and rocks all the way through to about the mid portions of the month, even just beyond that. And there is your MJO pulse that's going to continue for portions of the Caribbean and into the Atlantic. Atlantic that just continues to look better and better, especially once it sets up over Africa. That signal has not changed. This has kind of ebbed and flowed a little bit. That corridor there, weaker velocities, stronger velocities, it's going to do that. It's going to naturally do that as it propagates east. This is what we're really watching. That's the kicker. You get that standing wave to set up, and the tropical waves are going to find their way into a more moist 
a more uplifting and a more favorable setup all the way around in terms of wind shear, easterly jet momentum, divergence associated with that. They come off of Africa. You're going to have greater thunderstorm potential over open water. We have the warmer MDR now. This is the one thing I'm going to be watching because we have a lot of discontinuity here. We've moved over to our teleconnection charts for the PNA, Pacific North American Oscillation. And for those of you who may be new to the channel, positive phase, big old trough over the eastern United States. That's our saving grace. We had a large positive PNA during much of the 2023 hurricane season and a very weak Atlantic high pressure. So as we saw with Lee, Nigel, Margo, pretty much everybody, even Franklin, most of our storms, if not 90% of them, ejected out to sea. That was different last year. And if you notice, it's going to be close. At the bottom of the chart here, the 9th through the 15th, of August, we see the model here, the euro anyway, start to transition back to that negative phase, which means we start to couple with high pressure over the Atlantic, driving waves and other features out there further towards the west. You come over to the GFS, opposite signal here. Now, the GFS tends to progress your troughs a little bit faster sometimes. Sometimes it has a little bit more of a weakening of a ridge. Euro has a bit of a stronger ridge bias, so we have to take into account the biases of the models here. But notice a night and day difference. The Euro was honestly almost exactly at the same numerical value for the negative phase as the GFS is for its positive phase, right about where we could have something trying to push towards the Turks and Caicos, the Bahamas, hopefully north of the Greater Antilles. The AI model is picking the medium. It's kind of going the happy medium here, the middle ground. We kind of just stay in a bit of a neutral phase. And you can see once I switch this over to our NAO, it does pretty much the same thing with that. Kind of weakens it a little bit as you get closer in time, which could potentially keep things on that west-northwest path. And then depending on whatever comes from these waves that are coming up, that could determine if they find that escape route or if they continue to truck along and become a bit of a, you know, Something you want to watch is what I'll use. Something you want to watch if you're watching here in Florida from the Bahamas, even portions of Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, Dominican Republic, Turks and Caicos, and everybody up the eastern coast of the United States. I say that more so because we're less than 24 hours out from August. We're about to hit that uphill climb, climatologically speaking, historically speaking, things are just naturally going to get active. May not be gangbusters, storm after storm after storm, but now this is when we have to kind of keep our heads on a swivel and maintain our situational awareness, as I like to say. With that being said, we're going to wrap up. I'm actually going to send this video to my laptop so I can edit it from News 6. I'm going to get ready to hit the road as soon as I wrap up here. Thank you all so much for sticking with me. I do, again, apologize for my latency yesterday. It was just such a busy day. I wasn't going to fly through all this material just for the sake of putting a video out. I wanted to do an in-depth discussion for you, and I hope this helped. I hope this helped give you the information you need because the key takeaway here is not going to say something's coming, not going to say it's not coming. All I'm going to say is now's the time where if you're not prepared, let's make sure our plans are ready. If we do need to prepare, it's not going to be as painful as if we've dropped our guard all together in the ring with Mother Nature. You always want to keep those gloves up. You don't want to make sure you're bobbing and weaving as much as you can, even if the threat doesn't look as ominous. So we're going to continue to watch. You can count on the Weather Center to keep you ahead of the storm every step of the way. I may even do another video tomorrow if these trends stick again 24 hours more. I'll have a little bit more free time so we can dive in, and I will probably be starting up the live streams here very soon so we can have those wonderful conversations again. I hope you've all had a fantastic week. Happy Friday Eve. I hope Thursday treats you well, and we'll see you again soon. But until next time, this is Weather Center Nazario signing out.